the first first fly we're tying is called uh, we call it the crud puff. Crud. It is it is aptly named too because it doesn't look like much more than that. Here's here's a here's one I tied up earlier. So that's what we're going to be tying. So this is a uh, five 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 jig hook, a uh, little streamer hook, size twelve. I don't know how well you can see that, but there it is. Yeah, you can see it real well. It's 20 feet large. All right, so we're just going to kind of cross wrap this on. And I'm going to do as best I can with all of the little implements I have. Usually I flail a little bit more when I tie, but we're not going to do that too much tonight. All right, so most of what we're going to be tying tonight are going to be uh, subsurface patterns for carp. Um, not a huge call for a lot of top water stuff, but I do actually in my arsenal quite a few uh, top water flies that with, but more often than not you're going to be going after them down under but we'll talk more about that later so all right so we are going to oh, there we go so we're going to put a little bit of a tail on this we're going to use just some natural pheasant about the body length and with carp, one of the main things you want to re recognize and realize is that they're very visual. And so if you tie it streamlined, if you tie it coming off the back of the hook, you're, you're going to miss fish. You're not going to get their attention as much. And so if you go after the look, just think I need it to be vertical. I need it to be kind of sticking up a little bit. Now something, something to flag it down with. And... And I'll actually tie this in three different weights. Uh, so I'll do it with bead chain eyes. I'll also do it with these small um, lead, or these little brass and lead eyes as well. Or with no eyes at all, just a little bit of uh, leadless or leaded weight wrapped on the hook. Uh, just depending on the depth that the carp are at and feeding at, it just kind of depends on what you're after, or what they're after, I should say. So we're going to tie in the ribbing material. You can use, uh, one of my favorite ribbing materials is actually just old monofilament that I've retired from the year before because um, it's free and I've already bought it. But this is a, it's a Spectra Splash it's a Spirit River material. And I use this on a lot of my patterns actually. Uh, probably one of my favorite Corona mid patterns is with this, this body material here. Uh, but going to get. All right, and then we are going to get this special blended rabbit, which if you want to know where it's from or what the blend is, I don't know. You just have to raise rabbits and <laughs> shave them when they're done being alive. Do they kick when you shave them? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not breathing the hair in when you shave them is the tricky part though. All right, so we're just dubbing a nice, nice thick body on here. And with carp, another thing you need to recognize and remember is that they have some of the best sense of smell, sense of sight, sense of hearing of just about any fish you will pursue, fresh or salt water. And so you want to be, some, you want to have something that's visually appealing. Uh, occasionally, you want something that makes a little bit of noise. Um, so I just kind of, again, it depends on the conditions, how muddy or clear the water is. Uh, so I have your arsenal reflecting that. But this is just a good all-around fly. Um, and I've, I've actually caught bass and trout and perch and all sorts of stuff on this. Catfish, too, actually, come to think of it. Uh, caught a really nice, about a 12-pound cat last week on uh, a similar fly to this. So we're going to take that up to there, and we're going to take the, this ribbing material. And it really doesn't do anything other than add just a little bit of flash and change the silhouette a little bit. I think more often than not, we put stuff on flies for us than we do for the fish, but that's all right to do. All right. Where are you fishing for the cat, Austin? Utah Lake. Utah Lake. Out by the airport. Yeah. Um, down through there, so... And fishing for carp, stumbled so into it. So now we're going to add just.
with some of these legs here. I had one earlier. So when, when tying in these legs, um, a lot of people struggle with this because they'll try and put it on the side and it pushes around. The best way I've found to tie these is you actually find the middle point of the leg. There we go. You wrap it around your thread and you just pull it into place and it stays put. And if you're not happy with it, you replace it. And again, we want these we want this uh, to be up on the what to us would be the bottom portion of the fly because this is going to ride hook point up as most carp flies do. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the center port, center point, slide it right into position. Now, as they have some of the best eyesight. Uh, sometimes that little bit of flash will put them off, or who knows, I mean, it could be something you ate three days ago that you looked at wrong and they decided they didn't like it. But, so for these, we're going to use a little bit of Z-Long here, and we're going to use, there we go. Throw on some peacock. Now peacock, as you know, very, very, very brittle tying material. And I don't like having to tie flies over and over, having fish break it apart. So what I do is I'll actually treat it like dubbing, wrap it around my thread so that now, even if I catch a toothy critter, that's going to stay nice and put together in one chunk of hurl for me. It's not going to go anywhere. And I'll tie these with and without peacock heads. I'll do them sometimes just the whole thing with uh, hairs here. Just again, if it's a darker water situation, you'll need a darker head sometimes too. So it just depends. Just get those legs going the way we want them to. And now we're going to take this little bit of olive z on. What's the natural food that you're going to take? Uh, well, this, this could be a, a little baby crayfish. It could be, you know, kind of, yeah, anything. I mean, I've, I've, I've caught carp that have been feeding mid-water on these. I've caught them that have been down rooting in the mud. It just kind of is a good all-around pattern because you can... Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's just kind of one of those patterns. People ask me, what are you imitating? It's like, whatever they're eating. <laughs> as long as it's close enough to whatever they're eating, I'm good. All right, so same thing on that as the rubber legs. We just find the center point and tied it in. We'll just put that together there. And this, this will actually hide that hook point a little bit too. Uh, for those of them that are picky enough to have a problem with that. But it also makes us feel better. And I'll just trim it flush. Just like that. So there we go. And ideally, when you cast it, it should ride, hook point up and sit just like that. So there's that one. All right. Can I pass this around? Yeah, please do. Please do. Now we'll throw together a little bit bigger one. This one's... What do you call it? What's the name? This is the Crud Puff. Crud Puff. Yep. <laughs> one of them, yeah. All right. Now this is one of my, this is one of my new favorites. Uh, my, my daughter actually named this one. This one's called the Fraggle. Fraggle? The Fraggle. Yeah, just like Fraggle Rock, that old, that old TV show. All right, same thing. We're going to start with, but we're going to go a little, little heavier on this one. So this one's got the hourglass, a little heavier eye on it. There we go. Alright, run this all the way back. 
And then, because this is a deeper running pattern, I'm going to throw some either lead or non lead, whichever you prefer. On there. So now we're going to take the tail. So the tail I prepared earlier, uh, and it's this. This is this is where we start getting unethical and things. This is this uh, squirmy wormy San Juan material, which if you haven't seen it, you can pass that around and play with it. It's kind of uh, it's an interesting one. Um, but I, I basically have taken. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so carp, carp go a lot by feel too, and so if they, if they suck it up and it doesn't feel right in their mouth, they'll, they'll just spit it straight back out. And this one gives you an extra half a second to drive that hook point home. But what I've done is I've, I've lashed a little bit of uh, marabou onto the end of that. And the nice part is it's got this nice, very, very fluid motion to it. So, thank you. So we're just going to lay that in. Now this, actually this, this squirmy worm material is really kind of difficult to work with. So when you're first attaching it, if you can give it a base to attach into of uh, dubbing. I'll, I'll show you that in just a sec. I'll, it, it takes a little bit of finessing, but it's doable. Uh, so we'll just lay that on. So I've, I've laid down that little bit of dubbing there. And then we'll just do a trap wrap. Otherwise, this stuff just rolls all over the hook. There you go, kid. And it's really, really hard to get to stay put. So give it something that's got a little bit of grip to it. And that's looking a little long to me. Alright. A little better. There we go. Now, just like the last one, we're actually going to wrap up the hook a little bit so that we get that nice vertical presentation. I actually just caught a very large carp on this uh, last Thursday. Um, just kind of playing around with some ideas. And this fly came out of ice. But, um, so there's a couple different ways that I'll, I'll approach this. So I will actually, when I first get to an area, I'll actually drag it through mid-water a couple of times. Mid-water, three-quarter water, and then right down the bottom. And then I'll, I'll go after them uh, uh, sight fishing with it too at times. So it just kind of depends on where they're at or what I can see. But if I can't see them, and that's usually where I pick up most of my catfish is on those blind casts right through the middle of the channel or something like that that we'll, we'll go for them. All right, so now for this one, for the body, we're going to use uh, Cohen's Carp Dub. There we go. And uh, it's the Blaze Orange, and this is actually a really great material because it's, it's a synthetic, but it's got uh, some little bits of uh, mini rubber legs and stuff like that in it. So we're just going to dub a pretty thick body. Like this. So we'll very loosely dub this on because we're going to pick it out again in a minute. So this is the Blaze Orange carp. Uh, probably the two colors I tie most in this are the Northern Lights Black and the Blaze Orange. If you guys want to pass, pass those around here, you're also welcome to. Take. 
Now, as it's a carp fly, we want a lot of motion, a lot of movement. So, when you do attach rubber legs, you want to attach them longer than you normally would. And again, you want most of that being able to kind of stand up a little bit and in the water it'll, it'll just kind of sit and move a little bit more for you, but that's what we're looking for. And a lot of carp flies look really similar, especially the bottom stuff. It's just kind of you know, you imitate what they're after down in the mud. There's a lot of crayfish, there's a lot of damsels, there's a lot of dragonfly larvae and stuff like that that they eat. So, giant midges too. Yeah, yeah. Snails. Uh, they eat a ton of snails in, in uh, Utah Lake too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we're popcorn flies. We we tie a we tie a marshmallow fly too. For yeah, they're crazy. <laughs> All right. I love that too. All right. Now we're taking this macrame yarn. Great material. See how that'll look. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Same thing, we'll just kind of tie that half, put it in, line it up, and lay it back. Uh, one thing with carp, too, um, if you're used to tying with head cement, things like that, don't do it. They have the best sense of smell of just about any fish. And, I mean, even if you put bug spray on, sunscreen, touch your fly, they won't touch it really? more often than not. Yeah. Trim that flush right there. All right. And there we have the fraggle. And this thing is... <laughs> It's almost not fair, um, but it is kind of fun. So. <laughs> um, the, the one thing I have noticed, though, I mean, if you do, if you do use, if you do like using head cement and things like that, um, uh, the only thing that I, that I have found that I can use on a carp fly that they won't spook from the smell is the uh, loon. Uh, UV finish, um, and that's that's actually been a good one. Uh, so if you're doing bonefish bitters and patterns like that, that's actually a good material to use for carp. Hey Austin, uh, before you go on, tell us how you attach the feathers yes. to the squirmy yeah. one. Yeah, I'll show I'll show you actually. So we just take this little pin, and I'm actually going to use a thicker thread for this, but you lay down a good thread base. Right. Now this this came at the end of many uh, many cursing fits and trying to figure this out because this is a tricky material to deal with as you can see. Yeah. So you get that thread base, you get it to grip through the thread and then it's not a problem. Then you just kind of take this little bit and trim it flush. But then we'll take our marabou, line it up. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's another pattern I tie, it's called the chain reaction, where I, I do the same thing but with a bead chain tail. Um, what was that? Yeah, actually that would. <laughs> All right. And then we're just going to go overkill and put this last little bit on there. Because why not? Nope, there, there it goes being difficult. All right, there we go. Okay, now we get all technical. And I've actually, I've actually learned to uh, do this beforehand. So I do it on top. Don't let it soak through. But you just do a cursory. I'm going to shield your eyes from the UV because it's a fun one. So you just cure that real quick, throw a whip finish on, and then we'll take it off, and we'll do the second UV. And really all you need is one whip finish on that. Sometimes you'd be tempted to do more, but with that UV stuff, it just... And then you just slide it right off. And I'm trying to keep it on, on camera there. See that okay? There we go. So then we take, make sure you get the tip that came off of the needle, otherwise that won't, that'll just unravel on you real quick. Um, and for carp, more often than not, you're not doing a whole ton of big long casts and things like that. I mean, on occasion you will. Um, but more often than not, when I'm fishing these, it's just like a little swing cast or just kind of a bow and arrow over. So you're not causing, you know, not a whole ton of difference distance and things like that but I haven't I haven't tested these to find out how durable they are for casting and things like that but you know, they've held up to carp quite well thus far so why not Excellent. Thank you. yeah you can talk loud. I can talk loud all right I'll, I'll talk loud. all right there we go so this this hook you can see it's got that offset that is fantastic for carp um, the more out of line it is, the better hooking potential you have on that. So that's uh, that's just how these ones come. They're uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, it's Allen hooks. I got this at the expo recently. They've worked well. They've worked well. Deep barb them, and they they have a good hooking capacity. And I really, really like how I mean the how heavy they are as well. They they hold up. And they hold carp very well, which is nice. It's nothing more frustrating than hooking up to a 30 plus pound carp and having it straighten your hook too. So then you feel sad. Then we hear the extent of your vocabulary as well. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. So we'll get that on there good and tight. Wrap back again. Are you using colored thread normally or just the devil? Um, normally I actually will vary the color of thread based on how much weight I have in the fly. Um, so if I, if I don't have a, like, eyes or anything like that, so normally it's really easy to tell whether I've got the bead chain eyes or the, the other yeah. eyes as well. But if I don't have any external knowledge of how much it is. If I do five wraps of lead, I'll use uh, brown. If I have 10, I use orange. And then if I have 15 plus, I use black. And none is olive, so just depends. Yeah. That just helps me so that I know when I open my box and look in, I go, okay, I need one that's going to go deeper quicker or one that's not going to go as deep as fast. So just different conditions. If they're on sand, it doesn't really matter. But they're if, over, if they're over a weed bed, that makes it kind of difficult too. So, so you can color code a lot of ways. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Okay. I tell you what. I'm going to show you a more fun one. This one's nice and all, but it's close enough to the fraggle I just showed you. We'll make this one a little different. Um, so this is this is one that I tie a lot of, and I really enjoy it. Um, and I've caught bass, trout, carp, just you you name it. I've 
caught him with it. I can uh, even hook the pike on this. So we're going to take some, uh, some orange pine squirrel. And now we're just going to tie that into the tail there. And this is a really good pattern. It's very, very durable. It works well. And this is one that if you're out fishing for one thing and something else swims by, this is a good pattern to be able to throw at them. Um, I've been fishing for carp on Deer Creek and come up on bass, cast at bass with this. Uh, I've even caught walleye on this on Deer Creek as well, so it's been a fun pattern too. It was more of a surprise than anything, but that was all right. All right, a few strands of this dark, dark brown flash of blue. You could use root beer flash as well, crystal flash, that would be fine. Crystal flash, not flash of blue. And I leave these really, really long and then I'll trim them short later. Get this body wrapping forward. And like I said, this fly is really simple, but it's extremely durable. Works well. Is that wrapped or pine squirrel? Uh, it's pine squirrel. Pine squirrel. Same thing, we're going to put a couple different color lights on this one though, just for fun. But carp like orange, they are like orange a lot. Oranges, blacks, um, olives, typically the colors I tie most with. Um, but I've, I've caught carp on just about everything. I've, you know, we've caught them on size 18 nymphs while we're guiding on the Provo. We've, we've caught them on big streamers, trolling for trout, all that fun stuff, so you know, I haven't found much that they won't eat, to be honest. Found a lot they won't eat. What's that? You found a lot they won't eat? Yeah. <laughs> That's more often the case, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no, carp, carp, honestly, one of the most finicky critters out there that we can pursue with a fly rod, especially. But man, when you, when you can tie in, it, that is fun. All right, so we're gonna lay this one. Pull them tight so we're not sacrificing too much of the length. Actually, this, this pattern in all black is fantastic on strawberry, too. Uh, early season when those little, little tiny black crayfish are kicking around. They call this pattern the Cray Dude. dubbed head with this uh, Cohen's carp dub. Uh, another fun way to put this in, actually, if you pick it all out and comb it out, you can actually just lay it on as a clump and tie it in. And then there's a lot less picking you have to do later, which is kind of nice. Let's see, we're 
Just like that. Good fly, good hook gap, good hook gap on these. Uh, let's see, this is the Allen 105. These are the size two. What do you do if the fish is colorblind? <laughs> <laughs> Try a different one. <laughs> and there are days with with carp you want to match the color of the bottom. There's days you want to not match the color of the bottom. I mean, it just it kind of depends on. Some days, if there's any flash, they'll take off running, and some days, if they're not, they'll, they'll ignore it. So, who knows? You have to take your mother's age and square root it to the date you were born and subtract your amount of child. I don't know. I'm sure there's some mathematical equation out there to figure it out. I haven't figured it out yet. Car bar a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, anything like that. I can. Take a stab at it. You do all different I do. Um, I do. Typically, I will stick between, you know, size 12, um, 12 for some of the smaller ones. I mean, like like this guy that we tied earlier. That um, that's about as small as I'll go usually. Um, but there are days when it's hard to get them to eat anything bigger, and so you'll, you'll just have to go small after. So you want to find a good hook, good sturdy hook that's going to hold up well. And I've, I've found that these uh, these little streamer 555 five, five jigs from Tiemco work well. That's the size 12 on those. So. But yeah, range of sizes 12 to 2 usually works well. No. Yeah. Any other questions? Are the 